Welcome to this soul lifting broadcast, which has been put together for your spiritual growth and to make greatness common right where you are. Be sure to make the best of this moment as God takes the lead in all that concerns you. I'll be continuing the series that started on recipe for greatness, moving from uh, multitude to disciple. And today I'm going to be sharing on what I've titled Providential Relationships. God is in charge of providential relationships and he wants to reach out to us. The word providential itself suggests something that occurs at a favorable or opportune time, often involves divine foresight or intervention. That's providential. An opportune time, it has something to do with, you know, it involves divine foresight or intervention. Uh, that, that's a providential relationship. We have discussed uh, three things that God uses to grow us up spiritually. We have talked about the fact that God uses practical and applicable teachings of his word to grow us up spiritually. And I talked about having appetite for the word and uh, the grace to practice the word of God. That God uses that to grow us, us, uh, us up spiritually. I've also talked about spiritual disciplines that when we master the act of discipline to pay now and play later, to schedule the pain and pleasure in life, that's discipline, and to practice certain spiritual disciplines that God uses that to grow us up spiritually. We took that text from Matthew chapter 6. Jesus said, when you give, when you pray, when you fast, we said all these are spiritual disciplines that God wants us to be able to engage in periodically for us to grow in our journey of faith. Last Sunday, we talked about pivotal circumstances and the fact that God uses pivotal circumstances to grow our faith. We cannot read the Bible 24-7, but we go through situations 24 hours. In every situation, from the person who drove rough in traffic to the person who's supposed to open the door to you as you're going to work in the morning, entering your building, and the person says, I don't like your face, I'm not opening how you react to that, everything is adding up to your spiritual journey. God uses everything to communicate with you and to direct your steps. That was what we discussed last Sunday. And today, I want to look at providential relationships and how God uses providential relationships to start us out in our journey of destiny, to grow us in our journey of destiny, both spiritually and even in our careers, in our businesses. The fact that relationships are spiritual and that we cannot do without connecting with other people. God created us for connection, not isolation. I hope you understand what I'm saying. God, in his divine order, planned this world to run in family, not orphanages. We created orphanages, God created families. I hope you understand what I'm saying. We are created for connection, not isolation. My journey of spiritual development, my career journey, my journey in business is personal but not private. Those are the things I want you to, first of all, know this morning as we discuss. The journey of my spiritual development is personal but it's not private. They're two different things. My journey of career advancement is personal but it's not private. There are people who will be intricately connected with my journey both in spiritual development, in personal advancement, in, you know, in everything in life that God will place around me to take me to where I'm going. So if I have a mindset that everything about me in life is supposed to be personal and private, I may not be able to maximize my destiny. That's what we're trying to say. I may not be able to maximize my destiny. I have a personal journey of spiritual growth, but that journey in itself is not private. It's not private. The people that God will position around me to help me to connect with next levels in him in different areas of my life. Luke chapter 5. Let's read together our main text. Luke chapter 5. And I'll read from verse 17 to 20. Luke chapter 5 from verse 17 to 20. My journey of spiritual development is personal but not private. And I'm going to show you an example of that statement from this passage of the scripture. My journey of career development 
Emotional wholeness. Business progress. It's personal, but it's not private. Luke chapter 5. I'll read from verse 17. Now it happened on a certain day, as he was teaching. This passage was about the encounter of a paralytic man and Jesus. But watch what happened here. Now it happened on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and teachers, sorry, Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by, who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then, behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the mist before Jesus. When he saw their faith, if you have a good Bible, a paper Bible, please underline there, there, there. When he saw their faith, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. The Bible says that Jesus saw their faith. He saw their faith. Whose faith? The faith of the guy's friends. Four of them who carried him. This same account uh, um, you find in, I think, Mark chapter, Mark chapter 2 or thereabout. You find this same account there. How they, these four guys defiled all the fear of who is going to pay for the roof. They got their hands dirty. Tore somebody's roof. And lowered their friend. The truth was that the power of God was available to heal. But this young man cannot, you know, he, he couldn't have been able to get himself to where the power of God was available to heal. If not for friendship. If not for those guys. These guys, um, if you agree with me, they, 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 they you know, they look like Something that God arranged. It's providential that he had those kind of bold, audacious friends who can say we will damn all the consequences and bring this guy before Jesus. The power of God was available to heal. Do you have such friends? Do you have such friends? Do you have friends who will take up insurance for somebody's roof because of you? Do you have friends who will, who, will, who will decide, come what may? My friend must have an encounter with God. That's what we're saying. Do you have friends who will, who will say, look, I don't care what happens to me. I don't care, you know, if I perish, I perish. But I need to sort this guy out. That's what we're talking about. Because there are some places and some things you will never be able to experience in life until you have such relationships. Very important. Until you have such relationships. Such some things in God that we may never be able to touch until we have such relationships. Secondly, today, I want us, as we progress in this discussion, to also understand another basic principle. And that's that God is the only one that can create providential relationships. But God gives opportunities for relational opportunities. Can I say that again? There's something about providential relationships that has some divine touch because relationships are very spiritual. Very spiritual. Very spiritual. Very spiritual. Proverbs 13 verse 20. The Bible says that he that works with the wise shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. That means relationships are spiritual. If you align yourself properly, you get to where you are going. If you work with the wise automatically you become wise. Companions of fools, destruction. Now, if I were the devil, what will I do? I just make sure that you meet foolish people a lot of the time, or most of the time, and you connect with them. Am I saying the truth? Yeah. Well, what's the point in struggling? So far, I can just bring one or two foolish people around you, 
you know, I know that it's easy for me to derail you. And when God also wants to walk, what will he do? He arranges that you meet wise people so that you can become wiser. Am I saying the truth? It's just simple logic, but makes a lot of sense, both physically and spiritually. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, verse 20, he that walks with the wise shall be wise. The companions of fools shall be destroyed. Relationships are very spiritual. Don't take it for granted. Don't mingle with just anybody. Make sure that you are intentional about your relationships. That's what I'm saying. Seriously intentional about your relationships. Be very intentional. Knowing that relationships open you up either for progress or destruction. You need to be intentional, extremely intentional about your relationships. Extremely intentional about your relationships. So I was saying that God is the only one that can create providential relationships. But we can create relational opportunities. Can we go a little further with that? We can create relational opportunities. When you come to church, what this does is to open you up to relational opportunities. As a church all around this city, we have clusters and different things. I mean, small groups, all kinds of small groups that we try to put together for people to have relational opportunities. Relational opportunities. Relational opportunities. The truth is that our greatest regrets generally are traceable to inopportune relationships. I mean relationships that go bad. So you remember some people and you wish you never met them. The greatest heartache that some of us have had came from relationships. And some of us, too, the greatest blessings of all times in our lives came from relationships. The job that you, 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 where you're working right now, perhaps somebody linked you to that job. When you remember, you say thank you to Jesus. But you remember one guy who also broke your heart. And you say, God, God forbid. <laughs> never again. <laughs> you make statements like never again. <laughs> am I saying the truth? I said, am I saying the truth? Yeah. So relationships can be, you know, very good. At the same time, very bad. But how do we increase our chances for very good relationships? It starts with increasing our chances for relational opportunities. God works within my relational opportunities to bring me providential relationships. Can I say that one more time? I said, God will work within my relational opportunities to give me providential relationships. So the more I open myself up to people, open myself up to new settings, some of us don't know that time is ticking and you have a place that you need to be spiritually. You need, the, 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 there are opportunities for progress in the things of the spirit that will never show up to you until you connect with certain kinds of people. That's what we're saying. And when you come to church, some of us have the habit. Ah, uh, I, I just attend church. I, I mean, I'm a very personal person, very private, you know. It just, I, just, I just want to hear, you know, I, I like that young man, the pastor. I just, I just want him to, <laughs> I, I, I just want to hear him speak. Then I go. I, I don't have any business with anybody. I enter my car, I drive off. Yeah, people are even trying to greet you. You don't have time. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the way some of us behave. I don't have time. Some of us don't even know the, the people who live next door to us. And now we're saying meet people who live around your area in church. It's like a burden to some of us, what we're doing this morning. And I understand. I understand. I understand. But I wish we understand one principle, which I'm sharing this morning. And that is that for every relational opportunity you maximize, you are creating opportunities for providential relationships. It may be one person out of 100 that God wants to connect you to. But if you're not there, if you're not open to it, how will it ever happen? Are you still here this morning? I said, are you still here this morning? So it's very important that I have it at the back of my mind that God wants to reach me. God wants to connect me with new people as I open up to relational opportunities within which God can bring providential 
relationships that will move my life forward, that will bring a new season into my destiny, that will change something, that will change something. My journey of destiny is personal but not private. And I need to understand that and know it very, very well. My encouragement this morning is that you'll be bold and intentional about starting relationships. Introduce yourself to people. Don't shy away from difficult situations when you can, you know, genuinely help other people. Recognize that God may want to use you to also be a blessing to other people. So be the kind of person who uh, um, will say something like, I know this is not my business, but I think I should just drop this. I know this is not, I know I'm not part of this conversation, but I think if you do this thing this way, it will help. Be that kind of person that God can use to do that. Create, you know, an environment that enhances, you know, that enhances the possibilities of providential relationship. Be hospitable. Show kindness. Serve in the house of God. Attend small groups, clusters. Be open to meeting new brothers and sisters. If you're single, come to the bridge. That's the singles ministry of the Elevation Church. You may look around there and say, there's nobody to marry there, but that person that you're sitting beside me connected to somebody who is not even in Nigeria as we speak. That's how God works. But you look only with the eyes. You don't look with the eyes of the spirit. Yeah. Because some people come to a church like this now, just scan around, scan around. And then the next thing they'll say is that they don't have brothers in this church. Or they don't have sisters in this church. And then you just continue going around and scanning. No, God doesn't work that way. You sit there, connect with somebody. Somebody who does not look like your husband may have a cousin that will be your husband. Somebody who does not look like your husband may have a colleague at work that will be your husband. Are you still with me this morning? So we need to keep creating those relational environments where we're open to people, connecting with people. I know a family, my former pastorate, uh, that they lost somebody that was very, very dear to them. And the only couple that stood by them all through that season were people that they met at the cluster, at the small group. That couple, they had to fly this person out. They flew the person abroad. This couple that they met at clusters went to stay with this person in the UK. When they buried the person eventually, they were the ones who did everything. And they did, they know, they, 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 they don't share any blood ties at all. They just met in church. They just met in church. I can go on and on and on. I've seen. My journey of pastoring has opened me up to seeing a lot. And I'm saying this morning that you open up to relational communities relational opportunities and let God use it to turn something around. In conclusion this morning, your friends will determine the direction and quality of your life. It was so, or it was true when you were 14. And will be true when you are 40 and 60 and 70. Your friends will always determine the quality and the direction of your life. Thank you for listening. We hope you are truly blessed. Please feel free to email us at info at elevationng.org for all inquiries or to share any testimonies. You can also follow us on our social media channels at Elevation NG to have access to real-time updates on all broadcasts and special programs. Till we come your way again, keep making greatness common. <laughs>